So guys, you you almost missed a, a really interesting conversation, but we're going to try to include a little bit of it here. John and I were really talking about, and what we're going to be talking about on the show is, in your business, are you playing it too safe? Right? Now, that is going to be in a variety of areas. Now, John and I just happen to be talking about, if you know where customers are going, are you playing it too safe by saying, well, that's not what my product was made for? Mm -hmm. You know, in John's company, it's like, hey, look, I make uh, the ineffable brand has these beautiful socks. And women were the main buyers of these socks, but that's not necessarily what he has started a company based on. But are we going to ignore that and say, well, no, I, I'd rather sell over here mm -hmm. and not just go and say, well, this is who's buying. Let's go all in. Let's go big. Right. So how many other things, and we've got a couple of things that we want to mastermind on today on, are you playing it too safe with your product and your business? Are you playing small? So John, let's open with that, man. What are some examples? I mean, well, how do you know when, a, when you're playing too small? When you're hitting your goals, when uh, your goals are so low and so achievable that it's not even a challenge mm. anymore. That uh, you, you've got to continuously challenge yourself and set the bar higher. And that could be not just sales, but that could be research and development. That could be in a whole, you know, all different areas. Hey, we want to grow our team. Uh, we want to come up with better processes um, to make things more efficient and streamlined. But if you're not setting goals and achieving them with difficulty or, mm. or just falling short of them. Love that. Yeah, then, then you're playing it too safe. Wow. Your goals are too low. You know, that, that speaks to something, John, that um, the other day, man, I was in, and I love utilizing software to do marketing and utilize software to help people monetize their life. You know, that's my thing, the monetize your life guy. So I'm always using some kind of new product and it doesn't always work, right? Because I don't always understand it. And, you know, 90% of the time it's because of me, right? I didn't get any instructions or I'm trying to go in and just learn this stuff. But anyway, I was using this one product, man. And I tell you what, John, it was hard. I could not figure out how to move around in it. I couldn't figure out how to get, you know, my pictures in it. And I was, I was really frustrated and I'm in the room and I am, you know, just sometimes you can hear me being frustrated, you know? And, you know, I come out of the room and, and Linda says to me, she says, are you okay? I says, yeah, there's, I'm in there doing something hard. Doing something hard. And how many people move away from what's hard? That's kind of like what you talked about, hitting your goals. If you're constantly hitting the goals, you're not growing. You're playing it too safe. Now, I love when people say, hey, I got a SMART goal, right? And using that acronym. And I'm thinking, well, that's dumb, right? And they say, well, you know, you want to have something that's achievable. Otherwise, you get depressed or you don't achieve your, your, uh, your outcome and you feel like you're a failure. Well, not if you realize that this is really, really hard. And this is what I have found personally. When I do something hard like that, I'm in this, this software and I'm moving around and I can't figure it out. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to figure it out myself first. Then I'll go and try to get some instruction. Typically it's like, oh, I didn't know you just had to click here or that you just had to do that. But sometimes you do that hard stuff because when you go back to something else, you just made that very easy. Mm -hmm. Right? I can't lift a hundred pounds over my head in one, you know, fell swoop. Well, try it a couple of times. Try not to hurt yourself. Because when you go to lift 50 pounds, you're going, oh my God, this is light. So you should constantly, constantly be trying to do the hard thing. So in your business, let's think about this. In your business right now, what is it that you're doing that you're going, this is just too easy? You know, you could be making money hand over fist. Are you exploring other opportunities? Because we know somebody else sees that how easy it is. 
And then they get into that market. And next thing you know, they've eroded your base. And because you've never stretched yourself, never done anything hard, hit the goals easy. Now you don't even know how to do the hard work. And then sometimes you give up. And we're seeing a lot of that, right? The pandemic made a lot of people just give up. They says, ah, you know what? I like easy. I prefer easy. So we're suggesting to you and why we're masterminding on this is we don't want you playing it safe out there. We want you hitting home runs. You, John, you put a, a very, very interesting quote. And I love this one, man. By the Wolf of Wall Street, by the way. <laughs> playing it safe and taking no risks is a shortcut to poverty. We need to unpack that, brother. Absolutely. I mean, it, it can go all the way. Think of uh, us working with the abacus. You know, if, if we manufactured abacuses and for years and years, or we were in CR and we were using uh, the pre-computer type models of punch card systems and whatnot, and you failed and this almost happened to NCR, and we talked about this before, and you failed to put any research and development into what's next, what's the future looking like? Because you think the grass is green and it's always going to stay green, then you're going to become obsolete. What's and, next? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, and this is all of our businesses. You could be, you could be making uh, some sort of textile or whatnot. But then you see they come up with some new synthetic textiles. And, and just think about the, the, the garments and stuff that we see now with the Under Armors and, and the stretch and how, how they're not only strong, but, you know, they're moving. You have the four way moving pants. Um, and that stuff didn't exist 10 years ago where, where you could buy that. But you see all of all of these big name brand suit suit companies migrating to this technology because they know that the person wearing that suit they want to be comfortable and yeah. so they're it, so if you're making suits the old way with the same with the old materials and not not giving that flexibility and movement you're, you're probably not getting the sales that you once did and it's it's kind of like you're still you're still listening to all your programming on on a radio instead yeah. of watching you know television or looking on the internet they, you yeah. know there are people out there that refuse to to get on the computer and they're still typing stuff on typewriters and yeah some writers do that right and i'm like why do that hard stuff it, i tell you in my own life man what i found that when i do the hard stuff it again it just makes you look back and go wow what, what was i waiting for and mine was when I remember when I got my first smart TV mm -hmm. and it was very smart. It could do all kinds of stuff. Now, did I had to learn, you know, all the little, you know, heck yeah, I had to, but man, did it make my life easier? I could get all the shows. I can get all the, you know, uh, the Netflix, everything that I needed to get right there on the TV. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I, why, what was I waiting for? You know what I mean? I just want it. I like my simple. I like my easy. I like this thing that I knew. And now I'm, I just run head first into hard now because I realize that there's a lesson on the other side of it. You know, in my business, I look at and I say, what new and next could I bring in that will, you know, I'm telling you some of the things that I've used before that these new products have made them obsolete, but also it's made their cost obsolete. I'll give you an example. I was using a software program the other day, uh, a funnel building software program, and it's beautiful, right? And man, I wish I could bring it up. Let me see if I can bring it up real quick. But I mean, it was, it was so nice and so good and so easy to use that another product that I was using that cost me massive amounts of money, I was able to go, you're fired. I don't need to use you, right? I'm going to go ahead and share, share the screen here, John. And I want to show you this. This is something that I'm building out for a, a product of ours. So this is um, the audiobook, right? The audiobook got approved. Can you see this okay? Yeah, it looks great. Yep. And it, it's a funnel builder that um, 
that is in competition with one of the big, big, big fundamentals that cost you know, hundreds of dollars a month, blah, blah, blah. This did not. So I just was able to put this together. Look at this. I did all of these things. This is a free so a piece of software that I'm using that I used as a, if I clicked here, let me see if it'll play. All right, not play. So let me go ahead and watch this. Let me publish that. Uh, hopefully I don't. All right, so I'm gonna go back to, so you see, I built this out. Now look at this, I was able to put this on YouTube, right? Use this software, watch at the bottom when this thing starts playing. Chapter five, you must be self-driven. As you're listening to this, get on Facebook and like us because John and I have been talking back and forth about all the other things we wanna to bring to you. So, right, so, you know, so you see that? Just at the bottom, got some stuff going on here. And in this particular builder was able to create all of this cool stuff. Now, John, I had to, um, I, you know, I used a, a program to just create this and I hadn't sent it over to you yet, but you get a chance to see that just a little signature program, right? Now I know that's not your signature, but the point is I wanted to create something. <laughs> and I said, John, I need a signature, but you see, this was hard. I was using this and I says, man, you know what? This isn't the one that was causing me all the problems. There was another one that I was using and I thought, this is garbage. It was costing me a lot of money a month. It was super hard, couldn't figure it out, you know, and then from, and it cost just tons of money. And then when I was able to go to this one, it was just simple. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God. But I, I credit the fact that I was over there doing this other one right? That they wanted to charge you a whole bunch of money for. And you start kind of understanding what happens when they are doing stuff like that. It's like they give you a blueprint. And this is really real talk. They give you a blueprint knowing good and well, you can't follow it. And then what do they do? They offer to come in, hey, would you like our help? Next thing you know, you're buying another piece versus, you know what I mean? So I'm like, oh my God, this is not good. They make they made hard so that they can sell you more product knowing that you will give up. Right now, think yeah. businesses out there, whether you're just starting entrepreneurs or you're a seasoned business, if that's your model, you're going to have somebody come along and go, I, I decided to make it uh, a little bit easier for folks. And then they're going to use the fact that they work with you and had all this hard stuff and go over to this other product and go, oh my God, this is so super easy. That's crazy, man. I think in the real world, the one of the most obvious things over the past 10 years would be the smartphone. Because what, and that's, they, what do they call it, John? Or what kind of phone? <laughs> smartphone. Because yeah, the flip phones and, were dumb. And, and, and think about how many of our parents refused you know the 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 generation ahead of us refused to switch over because they're like oh this is all i need but then they start asking for pictures of the grandkids and stuff like that and and hey when are you gonna mail me some pictures hey we don't <laughs> we don't do it like that anymore we we send them via text message and you don't your phone doesn't do text message i can't send you a picture <laughs> your data plan's messed up you know but again what ends up happening is and i i had this uh i work with a lady and this is really funny, man. I work with a lady who had a flip phone, I mean, way too long. And she says, I don't want to learn a new phone. Mm. You know, and I, and I thought, okay, she was older. I think she was retired. And she was like, I don't want to learn a new phone. And I said, so I said to her, I says, you know, I can respect where you're coming from. I says, but let me tell you, once you get one, your life will change. She said, what do you mean my life will change? I said, your life will change. You'll see. Next thing I know, her husband and her kids bought her a smartphone for her birthday. Taught her how to use it. And next thing you know, she's on Facebook. She now has access to so many different things that she didn't before. All right. And because she, you know, you kind of think, I don't want to do the hard. But once she did it and figured it out, boom, her life got easier. That's what we need to be doing in our businesses, right? John, we are at uh, probably phase two of launching a business from scratch, right? And, you know, Absolutely. John and I, we go back and forth on this dang name, but the, you know, the, the Entre Hustler box or Entre Hustlers Hustle box. 
<laughs> John's like, oh man, stop. I don't got too much material with this name on it. But the point here is that, you know, this is a hard project because it involves other people. Mm -hmm. And this is something that when we were building this, if you guys saw some of the, uh, the uh, I think it was a couple of, it might've been last week that we did that podcast. We talked about building a business from scratch or check our YouTube channel. I think I put it on there like that, that title, business, building a business from scratch. And it gets difficult because you got, you got people. When you start bringing people into a thing, which you want to do, because you don't want to you know, put that thing on your shoulders yourself. Now you get into difficulty. Why? Personalities. People don't move at the same speed you move at. Right. You got to corral the cats. That's tough. Right. I know when I'm collaborating with other people, just getting them in the space. Hey, can I get this material? Right. right? And you send a message. out. Hey, come on, guys. I need you to, you know, here's a document. I need you to edit on this. It is that hard stuff, though, that once you get the motion going, right, push that boulder up the hill. Once you get it up the hill, guess what happens? It goes down well. Right? It has momentum. It was hard getting up there. So businesses out there, we, we suggest to you, uh, and we want to show you a couple of things that you could do to make what seems hard easy. John, there's some things that you're doing right now. You're leveraging the heck out of, uh, you know, other workers, whether it's Fiverr or whether it's Guru. I've done the same thing. Getting yeah, an assistant is an idea. Absolutely. If you're if you don't have enough on your plate or you're not being challenged enough, where you're not utilizing other individuals and talents and and skills that you don't have, then you're playing it way too comfortable. That's right. You're doing it within yourself. And we've really got to get out of that. Entrepreneurs, listen to what we're saying to you. We're masterminding on this thing, but we're not masterminding from a place of, oh my God, they have arrived. No, man. We're talking to you from a place where we have struggled because we were doing it ourselves. We were full of ideas and didn't put leveraging points in. And I can tell you that, you know, Randy, you introduced me to Fiverr, what was that, three months ago? Three months ago. And I and I've, I have over 100 projects I've had uh, individuals on Fiverr contractors do for me in that three months. And those are projects that would have stayed welled up in me right. because I didn't have the skill set or the artistic ability or whatever, or, or what I was, you know, what I would be releasing wouldn't be as good because I didn't leverage um, the skills of those types of individuals who have talents in the various areas. And that's um, one of those hard lessons, isn't it? And right? It's, Getting an assistant, um, it, it's one of those things where you kind of know, and it, that takes a little bit to figure out how to do that. But that's in your business. It, it, if you've got a couple of coins coming in and you can afford I mean, to give that assistant all of the money you would have been making, trust when I say this, it will make your life better if you get the right one and under the right circumstances. If you got to pay their taxes and all that kind of stuff, that becomes another deal. But if you're 1099ing, folks, because you're using contractors, oh my gosh. And this is something that John and I talk about too with the business that we got now. We're going to leverage the heck out of contractors. That's what we're going to do. And when I sit back, you know, I was able to, you saw that I edited the, the parts that you asked for some input on and was able to send it back. We've got to leverage it, leverage our contractors so that we immediately scale the business, right? So that's hard. Sitting down, figuring that out, hard. But once you do it, it becomes easy. Your business will become easier. You now can ideate in the afternoon, put a project out somewhere by evening, have it done in a day or two. Now think so about that. Even talking about this project, a lot of people are like, no, I don't want to share my ideas. I want to do everything myself. But when, when we started doing this project and there are six of us all together, we're leveraging all of the strengths of each of the individuals. It's not becoming too burdensome on time because everyone else has other things they're working on as well because we have uh, so many people and we're also utilizing contractors to do this. Right. 
And that, that enables us to do so much more. And our product would be so much, will be so much better than me doing it on my own, trying to do it on my own, because I, there are gaps in skill sets that, that I don't have that wouldn't be available um, to our potential customers. Right. And that's the whole idea, right? When we start thinking about um, Entre Hustlers Hustle Box, we're, we're basically saying, hey, listen, um, as an entrepreneur and as a slash hustler, your job is to do some of these things. That's what we're going to be rolling out, teaching you, showing you, and then saying, hey, open up the hustle box, mm-hmm. right? If you're part of the Entre Hustler Club, then you can get this box and you go inside and says, that's what I needed, mm-hmm. right? And then what we've been able to bring into this is the idea that, hey, listen, we're not just going to be the only two guys speaking to you. We've got four to five to six guys talking to you mm-hmm. and saying, here is something that can make your business life better. Whether you're an entrepreneur or a company, it can make your business life better, right? And then, you know, we're deciding on and determining how out in the marketplace we can position this. That's hard, right? Because in our hearts and our minds, we think, hey, everybody should want this. Right. And now what we have to do is the hard work of getting out there and seeing if somebody says, I want that. And that hurts your heart sometimes. Right. Because sometimes you get a message back that's like, we don't want that. Or we're not familiar enough with that. We're not familiar enough with you. Well, we got this and we're doing that. And that's fine. You see where we're going with this? So so now what we have to do is be very, very cognizant of how we're putting into this the amount of time that we put into this, the amount of money we put into this before we determine if this will work for other folks, right? And this is the conversation that we have back and forth. That's difficult because somebody may say something against what you in your heart and mind believe. And the only way to get out there is and determine if it'll work is when we test it, right? And that's how I come in. When I come in, I don't go hard at John, but I say, think about this. Let's consider this, right? Before we run off and do this. And that is, I think, one of the balance that that we share when we create a project together, right? We don't have to argue, but we don't have to, you know, totally agree. And we also understand, I think, that disagreement is not dislike. That's right. That is right. It's not dislike. It's, oh my gosh, you know, Randy don't like the idea. So he has a different opinion from a different lens, from a different perspective. So I say, okay, let's try it. Let's test it. Let's go out and put it on into a marketing funnel, if you will. Let's put it out there, throw a couple of ads at it, see if anybody says, what is this? What is this? Who are the entre hustler guys? And what is this, you know, hustle box? And if they get, open it up, right? And that's one of the things that I talked about, John, is let's go ahead and put grab grab all the, the components of it. If we can get every, you know, if we can corral the cats and put them all get the products in there into the hustle box, put it out there. And if people start saying, oh my God, I opened up the box and what I found inside helped produce more blah, blah, blah for my business. I want that. In fact, sign me up right now, right? And then that's where we know if we got something, right? And then we're going to race ahead and go and, and, and throw it all in. But then But by that time, we'll have people that have tested it, people that have given testimony to it. We could have four to five to 600 people saying, you know, maybe not that many. We don't want to give it it all away. But maybe 50, 60 people says, you know what? When I open up my hustle box, let me tell you what I got from that material from these guys that put into it. And let me tell you now how it helped my business. Boom. That kind of word of mouth right? Spreads. And then when we push it out and we start talking about who's utilizing Entre Hustlers Hustle Box, now we got something. And we can say, okay, how do we now play it big? There's nothing wrong with starting small, right? But when we think about starting small is not playing it safe because we have a bigger vision. And your business, same thing bigger vision, but then you start off with a little piece. And then when you see that that piece works, 
you are very comfortable with saying, okay, pour the gas on it. And the gas could be, you know, pour some money on it. Let's see if for two, three, four, five hundred dollars, we can expand it. And then we see that, oh, five to six, seven hundred dollars came back. Now we say let's pour four to five to six thousand dollars into it and see if 40, 50, 60,000 comes back. You see what we're doing here is we are thinking big, but we're starting small. And that's what we have to do. Your business, same thing. All right, so here's another thing I noticed that you had on the notes, John. If you're always doing the same thing, always doing the same thing, day in, day out, same thing, and not looking toward the future, you might fail. Absolutely. And same thing. And there, we get in this rut as business owners where things become comfortable. And so it's like we're walking through this without, without using any of our faculties. Um, it's kind of like we're just navigating through the dark because it, we know how to get around the room because we've don't, done it so many times. Well, that's kind of dangerous. Maybe it's time that we rearrange the room a little bit. Make I, it like, more I like doing that personally. <laughs> Furniture's changed. Yep. Rooms yep. changed. <laughs> so bring in fresh perspective, bringing other ideas. Um, because when you do get too comfortable, when, when you don't look to the future, then you are setting yourself up to become obsolete. And this could be in any industry um, from from food services mm -hmm. all the way to um, product, other types of products and goods and, and whatnot. We want, every, everyone is innovating. All of the, the big people are innovating, um, whether that's software, whether that's hard goods, um, whether that's intellectual property, things change and they evolve as our society changes. Because our society, everything around us in our society is changing. Um, the way we operate, our needs, um, the way that, that we navigate through communities. And so if we're not, if we're not using our, our skill set with those in mind, then we're not taking advantage of the full market. And the potential that we could have in our business, you know, 5, 10, 20 years from now. Right. So let's get practical with that, everybody. So sometimes, you know, we don't want to just give you broad perspectives. Oh, hey, look, you know, look at two Captain Obviouses. You know what I mean? We're just saying, hey, listen, here's how to make that practical. So let's take a look at a piece and portion of your business. Something that, you know what, it, you're just doing and it's just so easy. And if you're getting bored with it, I guarantee you, your customers might be too. And they're just waiting for something new and exciting to come along, right? So let, let's take... Um, the Clubhouse app, right? John and I were kind of debating a little bit about this earlier. And um, so it's become very, very popular, very, very fast. But is it much different than stuff, some stuff that was already out there, right? And we talked about Discord, right? That was kind of the same concept, but here's what Discord was. Come ye, come all, 24 seven, get in and get help from somebody within the space. Clubhouse comes in and says, nope, not, not, we're not inviting everybody. So they introduce exclusivity. So now you get the fear of missing out factor. That plays on your mind, right? You say, man, I don't, I don't like being left out of anything. So then you try the things that get you in. And while the people are in, and because they feel they're they're feeling exclusive, they feel better. Hey, I got in, you you can't. You know, I can buy this, you can't. I can afford this, you can't that makes me better than you. I mean, there's, there's something that plays on the psychology and then other people says, I don't want people feeling that they're better than me. So I'm gonna do everything I can to get in. And then that makes Clubhouse the, the thing and place to go to, right? And then what did they do? They did a little innovation that's not really that innovative. They did this, they says, yeah, we don't have a bunch of words in there. You don't have to type in anything, just talk, right? We love looking in and listening in on other people. Peeping in, right? We're voyeurs. We're looking in going, what do they say? And you can have some really cool conversations. And then of course you get the marketers and then you get the people that say, hey, listen, um, I'm gonna come in and create a space that is very unique, pay me for that. 
So then you will figure out how to leverage this exclusivity and the fact that people like listening in and that it's easy, right? Because we don't have to read it now. We can just listen. That makes it easy for us. So we could be walking. We could be running, listening in on people's conversations and get in and decide if we want to add a bit of our expertise or not. Isn't that the same as what Facebook groups do? Just different. So if you think about your business now, what can you do to innovate within what you already do? Yeah, and, and, and we have to think of it this way, that every product and service, whether it's Clubhouse or you own a, a restaurant, a fast food restaurant, every, everyone has ancillary companies that are built to support that industry, whether it's packaging different things, whether it's a wholesale provider, whether it's uh, education or a software program, payroll program. I mean, I, the, it's endless. And Clubhouse isn't any different. And the industries that each of us in is not any different. Um, the, the individuals that make our labels, it's, it's usually not done in-house. The printers of, of those types of things. Um, the shippers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we have to keep all of that in mind. And I think that's what a business person does constantly. And they're thinking, hey, look, well, is there something that I can do different? Is there something I can streamline? Is my competition doing something that everyone is jumping on saying that this is the new thing? Is there a new um, material that has been invented? Uh, just think tennis shoes. So if you grew up in the what 50s, you didn't have tennis shoes. Um, so now we have thousands of tennis shoes. Tennis shoes and jeans. And jeans, yeah. <laughs> jeans used to only be for, for cowboys and farmers. And now right. everyone wears jeans. Um, so we we have to think about those types of things and even even like uh, i was listening to a podcast in regards to north face and um patagonia oh, yeah. and starting in the 60s and whatnot mm -hmm. and how you, they built this for for outdoors people you know mountain mm -hmm. climbers rock climbers those those types really durable big pockets they can fit a whole bunch of stuff in when they're climbing and whatnot mm -hmm. and how in the the 90s a lot of these products, um, people in other areas that they, they have nothing to do with the, you know, the, the outdoors industry, didn't rock climb or anything. And 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 I own a I own some of that stuff and I don't rock climb. Um, but we thought it was cool, it was a great product. And so we have to think about that. Um, you know these our products and services are bigger than us and when they start taking turns like that if patagonia and and north face would have ignored that if they would have said hey no 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 we only want rock climbers they would have lost out on millions and millions and millions of dollars i love uh, john you just said something man that, that, that made my ears um poke up um so our products and services are bigger than us do you, uh, entrepreneurs out there, do you see your product and service as bigger than you? That's a key question because that's going to be, that's going to be the thing that starts you thinking big and, and not playing small is if you see that your product and service is bigger than you and it is for the world, is for the communities that you're serving, then you will suffer through. Now, here's, a, I think, a very important point, John, is you'll suffer through the times where it's lean right? You'll suffer through. And we all, I tell you some days when we're, you know, the podcast, when we first started, I was like, man, you know what? We're, you know, not getting a lot of uh, a play time and all that kind of stuff. And that, and typically that's when people quit that 40, 50, 60, 70 episodes in, nobody's really coming. Nobody's listening. YouTube channel, you know, 40, 50, 60 people, boom, you know, two, three years, nothing. And then all of a sudden, bam, hockey stick time because they stuck to it. Right. And as a person that says, hey, I, I can new shiny thing with the best of them. I can go follow something new and shiny with the best of them. Right. But when you say, you know what, this is bigger than me. 
We believe that the information that we're sharing with you is bigger than us, that it could be the thing that inspires you that day. It can be the thing that you go, I never thought about it like that. So perhaps I should. It's the thing that keeps us coming and getting together every week and putting these things out for you, right? And we know that the information in here is valuable. We know that we drop nuggets. We know that we, we mastermind on things during the week and bring it in, in onto the program on the weekend, right? So it is that kind of thinking, guys, and, and young ladies out there, it's that kind of thinking that's going to make sure you don't play it too small. Make sure that you're always thinking about the big picture. Make sure that you're staying literally, that you're staying motivated to do that thing that you do. Even when you're not making a lot of money at that particular time, keep pumping the product. Now, this is what we're finding because you can repurpose, right? There's no failure. I, I was telling a young lady yesterday, I actually did a live consultation yesterday and I've been doing a lot of those, kind of a Q&A, hey, how can you help me with this? And then live consultation, like, all right, let's solve the problem right now. And she well, she did like 40 to 50 takes. She's very new to YouTube and I'm showing her how to you know get on YouTube, create her podcast via the blog, right? YouTube channel first. And she just was like so frustrated. I mean, really frustrated. When I got the message, she's like, look, I can't figure this out. I can't, I, I did 50 takes. And I says, well, you don't have to do 50 takes. You just need to start 50 times. She said, what do you mean? I said, because I'm gonna show you some editing software that if you make a mistake here, you keep going. You just stop and say, okay, let me say this over. I says, and we can take the good parts, get rid of the bad parts, and just connect them all together. And she has stopped, started because she didn't know that she could use a particular piece of software. I says, there are no mistakes, there's no failure because software is going to say, or the software and the editing is going to save us. Mm -hmm. So I literally did a live. I said, send me one of your files. Sent me one of the files. I put it in one of my programs, software programs. And right there live showed her how we took pieces out, put another piece in, took some music, put it to the music, just like that. And she was like, oh my gosh, you mean I was literally jumping off the cliff for nothing? It's like, well, you know, sometimes you didn't know, <laughs> right? John, there's a quote here that I really like, man. This one was from Reed Hoffman. And it says, ironically, in a changing world, Playing it safe is one of the riskiest things you can do. In a changing world, we know this to be true. How many things, businesses out there, you're listening, how many things right now you've had to change? Come on, because of the pandemic of 2020, what did you have to change? And did it make you better? First you were scared, but now you're better. Bet you, bet you thought the only way that you can have an appointment with a customer was face to face. Right. How many people were utilizing technology in the, to set up their meetings? Most people were still meeting face to face. You know, and I've thought a lot about this over the past eleven months because there was a time that I was driving and flying all over the place, right. and you know, staying in different towns, different nights uh, for a few nights at a time. And I think about, wow, that wasn't really necessary. <laughs> uh, how many people in schools were like, you know, I can learn a whole different way. Yeah. And then you remember the early adopters. Now here's, here's, here's what, how that brings this back around to what we said, just a couple of um, a paragraphs ago. The early adopters that weren't making a lot of money in this space were just plugging away, right? Not really a lot of people using their technology, whatever it was, whether it was, you know, um, uh, StreamYard, because StreamYard is kind of like Zoom, but not a lot of people were using it. Just some fringe folks. I just got my band people, they're using StreamYard and they're putting their stuff out there. And all of a sudden, the need for this technology happened. And remember we talked about the hockey stick? Imagine if they had quit. Nobody's using it. You know, we're, it's costing us a lot of money to hold the pipe, to have the space on AWS or whatever. And I can't afford this, I'm quitting. 
But somewhere along the line, they saw that what we are doing here is bigger than us. We are allowing people to connect in a whole new way, inexpensively, without a whole bunch of technology. And that is good. They had a few users and then they had a flood. Zoom, same way. Then they had a flood, right? And of course you had associated problems with that, with the Zoom bombers and people coming in doing bad things. But the technology was in place and now it has made us more productive, made you not have to travel all over heck and half, you know, hex half acre, right? And it has allowed so many new players to come into this space and uh, provide value. We've got to look at our businesses the same way. I, and I don't really care if it's a food business. You know, I was telling a guy just uh, recently that, look, here's how you can make your business a whole lot better. This is some of the things that you could do using the technology, using what you're already doing. Has a traditional way to serve his customer. But I says, there's so much more underneath that. He didn't see it at first, but then after we got done with our session, he did. That's the kind of stuff that we're thinking about all the time, right? And this is what he, Reed Hoffman says, in a changing world, the safe thing is the riskiest. So yesterday, at, you know, over the pandemic, no restaurants, uh, well, very few restaurants are operating in dining. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, you know, I'm hungry. I want some lunch. So I pulled up Grubhub. Mm -hmm. And I typed in a, a restaurant that I really like. I typed it in because I was craving a burger from them. <laughs> and guess what? They weren't on Grubhub. So they forfeited my purchase because, hey, you know what? I'm not, I'm not, it's Michigan. What is it? 20 degrees right now. There's snow on the ground. It's cold. It, there's a pandemic. I don't want to drive clear across town to go to, to pick up this and wait in line to, to pick up this food. So I had, I had to choose another restaurant that was utilizing that service. It and might how be many good. Times? Yeah. Yeah. They might've just lost a customer. Absolutely. Cause they won't do the hard thing, right? They're playing it safe. Well, I'll just wait till it comes back. I went to one of my favorite restaurants just recently and uh, and I started thinking about it. And I says, you know, they did a really interesting thing. They says, well, we need to get your name and your phone number just in case there's a problem. You know, in other words, just in case somebody gets sick or whatever, they can call you and say, hey, listen, we had a, a, a deal. And then you've got other restaurants that guess what? Now this, they had paper that you have to handle, that you have to put into a, a container with more people to handle it. I, I'm not doing that. And then you had another one that just came in and says, no, just type it in here. And they do theirs electronically. Cost a little bit more, a little harder, a little harder to figure out, right? But easier in the end. And if they're smart, they just have, in a situation where you don't normally you know, collect the email or an opportunity to have more conversations with your customer, have just in one fell swoop, been able to now reach out to the customers and they should, they should be sending me a special. Hey, listen, if you uh, grab today, uh, you can get this on special because maybe they order too much. Whereas before they would get food waste. And now because of this new way, no food waste, right? Things like that. So you see how something like that could change the way you do business. And as a result of doing something kind of hard, you end up doing something way better that makes you more money in the end. That's the part that we, you know, don't want to forget. And John, I know in one of the uh, note points is like, you don't want to decline into irrelevance. That's personally, can we say that personally as well as who, who's out there right now that refuses to get on Zoom? That's And not just you, Zoom. Right. There's a whole bunch of other ones. You got Google Meet. I, I meet people via Google Meet, uh, Duo on your on your Android, um, Messenger, Anytime. right? Face to face. That's FaceTime. That's a ton of them. The point is, who's out there saying I'm not doing any of that? Mm -hmm. You may be falling, declining into irrelevance. 
restaurants. I know a couple that have not opened yet, John. They can, but they, they have not because they don't want to go through all of the stuff that they need to go through, the protocols. I'm not sure I want to go to that restaurant anymore. The time away made me fall out of love with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's falling into irrelevance. Now, on the personal probably side- found something to fill that gap. You found yeah. another restaurant probably. Yeah, I'll go over here. And, and, I, and I'm, only, I'm not enamored with you anymore. I think about something like this, John, churches, mm -hmm. right? I know one, one of my buddies, um, and I got a couple of buddies that are pastors, one buddy from day one of the pandemic started doing more church. And his, his, his church has grown like crazy. So what did he do immediately? Every day he started coming on, mm. doing a daily something versus just the week. Right. Because typically you could just say, OK, on Sunday, we're going to open up maybe Saturday, whatever. And he says, you know what? I'm coming in to talk with you every day. And I'll come on. I'll see that he's on. I'll go and check him out. Right. Stuff like that. Now, this is the church that I normally go to. But because he was getting out there doing the hard stuff, that means he had to figure out some technology, he had to you know do a couple of things that was hard. He says, I'm not playing it safe because I don't want people out here not remembering the Lord is in their life. He didn't fall into irrelevance. Some churches are falling into irrelevance. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to go to that church. They're not doing some of the other stuff, the extra stuff, getting into people's lives, right? Every single day because of technology. What about that? John, what about this one? Losing potential big fish customers due to not stepping out of your comfort zone. Ooh. Absolutely. <clears throat> I think back uh, when I was in the construction space, the pipeline space, and we had an opportunity to bid on a project that was much larger than sc in scale than we'd ever done before. And multi-million dollar project and there was a few times when the three of us partners were chatting that some of my partners were like, hey, this is, this is too risky. We've never done anything like this. We took it and we made a lot of money. It was but at the, first people were like, uh, it was too risky. Yeah, I'm not doing that. They're playing small. Too risky. It's same stuff we did, you know, already that we've been, you know, that the company had been doing for 17 years. Just different different scale of product, um, different size of product. We had the expertise. Um, and so we, you know, this is a conversation that we had, it, you know, the, and from that, we were able to get to, to gain that customer who hired us for other projects that were big in scale, much bigger than we were doing in scale at the time. And so it just led up on that. If we if we would have said, nope, we're gonna pass on that. That project's a little out of our comfort zone. We've never done that before. They would have moved on to another contractor and hired them and never contacted us back again. And so we have to think about it when we're not willing to take those risks and you have someone coming to you that is a big fish that this this isn't just about this opportunity. This is about subsequent opportunities, you know, to, in the future that, that it could mean for your business. Then you have to really think really hard. Hey, do, do I want to stay comfortable or do I want to, do I want to go for it? This, this is something that, that I had just came across the other day and it was in the 3d printing space. Right. And um, so it's these houses that they're creating in, you know, using 3D. And they had says, well, you know, when you have one of those houses, it looks like what they call sausage houses because of the way it prints, it leaves, you know, the, you know, the material's all fat. And then at the end, it, it, it looks like, you know, they just laid sausages on top of each other, right? And, but this particular house builder, I think it was iconbuild.com, icon houses. Now get this, this is something interesting. So they says, yeah, we can create this house for a fraction of the cost. And then we've done something about that sausage look. 
right? So they get it printed up, do it really fast. We're talking about a day to build a nice little shed for yourself or a nice little house for yourself. It is, they use um, a particular type of product. And I started thinking about that. I was like, wait a minute, they can get these things done like that. That can, that can end homeless problems, homelessness problems because you can build shelters really, really quick, really, really fast. You know what I mean? In, in, in certain areas, because it was really, really fast, if that area were, uh, were to change, you can, you know, bust down the house because it didn't cost a lot to put it up in the first place. And you can get people out uh, off the street. You know what I mean? And I started thinking about that. Imagine how many you can build. Now, here in the United States, we're kind of coming to that. In a lot of other countries, they're, they've been, they're building 3D buildings. They figured out how to put this thing on a crane and just create buildings like crazy. Now, Icon is doing something hard. And I saw something, I was on their site and I thought, this is interesting. Now I saw that they had a futuristic, the what's coming next part here, everybody, that they says, what if we can go to the moon, take the, the building products to the moon, set it up. Now, keep in mind, you, you can have a person or not a person, right? Because there's so many things you can do techno technologically. And you can start building structures on the moon. And I thought, oh my gosh, hadn't thought about that. And they're exploring it. They're thinking about the hard stuff. We can build I'm here. Looking at, I'm, I'm looking at one of these houses right now. And this yeah. is amazing. Isn't that interesting? Amazing. Yeah. So think about this now, everybody. You print up this 3D home. It costs you a couple of bucks. And this is, I actually read a guy was getting these 3D homes built really, really quickly on his land and then renting them out. Mm. Going on Airbnb and renting them out. And he had all the, you know, break down all the cost and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, so he, he built it for cheap money. Not the traditional. The traditional would have cost him three hundred thousand dollars, and he had had to charge a ton of rent. But these didn't cost that much. He got them done fast. People wanted a place to stay. They need a little office. Maybe you need an office in your backyard, and you have one of these three D printer places come up, drop you a spot, a, a nice little nice office for peanuts. You've just improved the value of your land. You've got yourself a nice little office. Now you don't have to go and rent an office and spend probably that same amount in half a year. Think about that. So this, this, this group was doing something really, really hard. And they said to themselves, you know what? I'm thinking bigger than ourselves. Because if we get to the moon, we can you know, go on Mars or whatever. Now they can connect with uh, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, right? And say, hey, listen, shoot this up to the moon, we're going to um, shoot this up to the moon, shoot it up to Mars, and we're going to build a space using this 3D printer. We're going to build a space so when we go, we have somewhere to be and live. It's like, wait a minute, can you do that? Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> they can talk to stuff in space. You know they can do this kind of stuff, right? Tell the machine, okay, start up. <laughs> Come out of the crate. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, that's hard. But that's stuff that will help humanity. And they're thinking big. You see that Icon Home, how they're building that stuff, man? It's incredible. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually still, I'm still looking. So what we do is, and one of the things I like to do is I look at that business model and I start thinking, how can this be used in a different capacity? How could this idea, how can we reverse engineer this? And this is why we get together when we mastermind on this. We say, okay, all right, how can we help you now based on something that we saw Mm -hmm. think about your business so all right in this particular case let's think about they are using a technology that is here enough but not being totally utilized by a whole industry why because they're used to doing it a certain way they're used to using sticks now we think about this for a moment and we're deforesting, we're using up our forest space and that's messing with our carbon, blah, 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 right? You start seeing the connection here. But if we use this manufacturing process, we can change all that. We can make stronger, better, more interesting designs. Did you, if you see some of the designs they have, it's like, oh my God, 
right? And if you ever go on a, a, a YouTube journey, which I did for like three hours, <laughs> and it's like some of the things that you could do, some of the curves that you can make, and you can make an interesting dwelling unlike anything you've ever seen. That changes things. And in your business, as you reverse engineer that idea, what out there right now will help your business streamline faster? We've just given you some tips, right? Utilizing mm -hmm. assistance early in your business, utilizing contractors, outside talent early in your business, even before you think you're ready to get stuff done. Get stuff, and you talk, and you, we heard John how he says, hey, look, and I've only been introduced to this three months ago and I'm on fire with it. How you can now create multiple things for a little bit of money and that could help people in, in a big, big, big way. Right? That's interesting. Now, this is another one, John. I love what you said here. Is how you, um, and this is consistent with what we just said, newer and better materials. That you're not trying out these new and better materials. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and this is something that I, I did earlier when I was trying out this new software. Now, I've been able to use this new piece of software and it saved me. And I kid you not when I say this, I can do the math on it. It saved me. Let's see, I know what it costs per year. It saved me probably $92 a month. Mm. All right now, I test stuff out, see if it works. If it, if it doesn't work, then it's like, uh, right? No harm, no foul. Give me a refund. But I had been so used to using another process, and I'm looking at this and going, oh my goodness gracious, I can let them go, save myself tons of money, build these things out. And I'm not stopping there. So I went to a couple of contractors and I says, this is what I just built using my time and what I just bought as a software. Can you replicate that? And I says, if you can do it better than I can do it myself, I'll fire me. Now think about that, what I just said there, everybody. I went and tried this thing and you're going, well, you got, you got the software, you can do it yourself. Yeah, but guess what? Sometimes you need to quickly do a prototype. Like when John and I are rocking this business out, we need to do a quick prototype to get it out there. That's something that you might do yourself because you don't know what you all, all that you need. So you put something out there that people go, what is this mess? Or they go, this is interesting. What is that? Then you bring it back in and go, hey, improve on this. Make this better, make it faster, make it smaller, make it tighter. But that's speaking to, right? Doing and using new and better materials. John had a process. He was cranking out probably a book a year. Now he knows that he can crank out a whole lot more because it's not all, it's his ideas. And now putting it over into the hands of somebody that says, this is all we do all day long. Mm -hmm. Right? And some people are worried. Oh my gosh, you know, and I've seen this too. I'll see an article, John, written by probably some, you know, freelance writer. And I'll see that same article somewhere else. See, I mean, come on. You know, somebody ought to put that stuff through Copyscape and see if anybody's plagiarized it, right? There's, there's an actual program called Copyscape. Gr Run it through Copyscape to see if it's if it's plagiarized. Yeah, if you have the the premium edition of Grammarly, you could do that as well. Exactly, right? Yeah. Now Grammarly is you know charging you a couple of bucks so you can see if it's cop if it's if it's plagiarized. But that becomes one of the worries, one of the problems. You know, you see your same stuff in somebody else's product. But here's what we what we know. You are going to constantly be moving and constantly improving. So you're not gonna worry about that, right? You're not gonna worry about competition simply because you are, as they talk about in Blue Ocean, you're constantly, constantly testing new things, doing other stuff, bringing in newer materials, right? And trying and testing new things. You're, you're innovating constantly. Why? For the benefit of your customer. That's the key here for the benefit of your customer. Ask yourself right now, are you doing that? Have you gotten yourself into a rut? And if so, let's stop now.
right? John and I help you with this stuff. If you want to call us up, you know, we, we, when you see what we'll be rolling out with Entre Hustlers Hustle Box, when you see these kinds of things, this is the kind of stuff that says in one of the hustle box, boxes, you might see how to get your business out of a rut now. And if you've subscribed to it, I think that's one of the uh, revenue models that we'll use. If you subscribe to the hustle box, then you got to know this is what we're, we're collecting. This is what we're putting in. And we're also, I think, going to have a component where send in your problems and your box is customized. Now, that's hard for us. Because we would like to uh, you know, have an assembly line approach here, right? We put these in. Does this fit your business? Versus, hey, if you need a customization, let's talk. Might cost you a little bit more, but let's talk. And then we will collect the people that we know are, are, are uh, a part of this. And we will say, here's the problem. Let's mastermind on it. And let's send them in the, into their hustle box. Let's send them the solution to their business problem. Think about that now. You no longer have to think about it all yourself. <laughs> you no longer have to have a meeting and say, I need ideas. We will send you the hustle box and y'all can talk about the idea and implement it. That's the cool thing about why I believe um, Entre Hustlers Hustle Box is going to be super successful. We don't know yet because it's still in beta. But we want you out there using it. So if you're listening to this and you say, hey, I'd like to be one of your beta testers, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Get in touch with us. And we will get it out to you as soon as we possibly can and while it's still in beta. So you can test it out. Does that sound fair enough? John, is that, is that doable? Is that, that's a little hard, but is that doable? That sounds great to me. So one of the last things, the guys, that we want to talk about you, uh, talk to you about is uh, not talk about you, but, you know, talk to you about it. everything every day is Groundhog Day. <laughs> I saw that cracked up. What do you mean by that, John? Everything every day is Groundhog's Day. This goes back to when I was talking about that you can navigate the room with a blindfold on because you've done it so many times that you're doing the same things over and over again yeah. that you're you're not you're not venturing out hey what if something what's a new offering or some research and development or am i if, am i looking at my competition am i shopping my competition i mean various things like that that break up the monotony because you want your business to not just survive but thrive yeah. and the only way that you can do that is by challenging and making yourself go through these processes that's interesting so it speaks to you know it, it's i told somebody the other day they says hey man how are things going i says you know no day with me is ever the same and it's the weirdest thing when I'm creating something, it seems the process is similar. In other words, I show up in my home office. I open up the computer. I look at my list of things to do. And I guarantee you something is going to trigger. I'll see an email. I'll see something that I go, I need to work on this right now. And then it goes, you know, a nice little journey. And the day is never, no two days are the same because I'm using some kind of software here. Like for example, the other day I used like three different pieces of software to produce a thing, right? I wanted to make a, a picture into a circle. I use another software. A lot of this stuff is free. Um, and I can share this, this uh, the software that I use. Then on another one, I says, you know what? I need to create a 3D rendering of a book so I can put it on, on to the funnel that I was building. So I used another piece of software that allowed me to go and make a 3D book just like that. Now, if I had sent all of that out, then now we're talking about a lot of time. And I wanted to get done with this thing in the same day so I can get it out there, get it out there for testing, get it out there so people can raise their hands and say, hey, I like this. This is awesome. Right? So now, if you are the opposite and every single day you're doing the same thing, boy, oh boy. That's boring. Mm -hmm. That's not exciting. And, and 
one of the things and that I want to share with you guys, then this is what helps me make decisions. So, you know, you can do what you want with this is I say, is what we're creating going to change the world? Now that sounds, oh my God, he's that guy, pie in the sky guy, Zen dude, no. But the thing that I'm getting ready to do, I ask that question, could this change the world? In other words, if it changes a business and the way they do their thing and they change the world, my contributions has helped change the world. That's the kind of stuff that'll get you and keep you in exciting things and get you out of Groundhog Day is what you're doing changing the world. That's being bigger, that's thinking bigger than yourself. That's saying to yourself and your clients, I'm working on things for you that could change everything. Mm -hmm. Zoom changed the world because so many people are now interconnected. And now other competition has come into this space and says, hey, we have a technology and it's even faster and better. That could change the world because it, it, it connects so many people and you get so many ideas in now, you could be talking with someone over in a whole nother country and what you two come up with changes everything. Mm -hmm. Because now you don't have to get on a plane, incur the cost of traveling. You can save money, you can put more money into your ads, you can put more money into your uh, research and development, it could change the world. Mm -hmm. You can wake up at three in the morning and start working. Because somewhere, somebody's up. I was talking to a guy at eight in the morning and where he was, it was two. Right? And he was in the UK. Somewhere in the UK. You see? So, a point here is this. That because of technology, you know, I no longer believe in insomnia. <laughs> I go, just work. And then if you get tired in the middle of the day, take a nap. Because guess what? You're probably working from home. You're creating value that you can now sell on a variety and in a variety of ways because a lot of other people are home. Mm -hmm. And they now are wanting to receive your information and your products in a whole different way. They're not at the store. They don't have to see it at the store anymore. You see, my point here is that ask yourself, how is this changing the world? How is this changing in a massive way? How is this bigger than me? That'll get you out of growing all day. Sound reasonable? Everybody, listen, this is just two business guys masterminding. And we're masterminding for your benefit. Coming up with things that we see, problems that we see, problems that we have, and come on here and say to you, hey, listen, this might help you. You might want to, you know, watch, listen to this to the end because I think this will help you. So we appreciate the time that you spent with us. John, what can we leave folks with? As a last little thing, one of the quotes here is one I want to close with when you when you go, go after you. If you're comfortable, if you're not rocking the boat, then you're not doing enough. And the one I like is Sophia Loren, right? He says, after all these years, I am still involved in the process of self-discovery. Mm -hmm. It's better to explore life and to make mistakes than to play it safe. Mistakes are a part of the dues one pays for a full life. That is very true. Mm. For a full life. How many of us right now are saying, I am not living a full life. I'm, I'm, I'm playing small. It's playing small in your love, how you're loving your spouse. Playing small. Mm -hmm. Playing small in how you're going out there and uh, getting business. I'll give you an example, John. I just uh, helped a young lady with her proposal. She was proposing to a big company that her company comes in and helps them. Mm -hmm. And I said at the end, I, you know, edited a couple of things for her, looked at a couple of things and says, listen, be unafraid, unafraid in going out there and making an attempt to bring income into your company, into your life. And if you be unafraid now, so she was like, I'm so scared to send this out. I says, be unafraid. That is your business's job and it's your job to constantly say, I think I can help your company and I can save you money and I can save you time by doing it. Here's how. 
put a proposal together. And that's what she did. Put a proposal out there. I looked it over and says, it's, it's reasonable. And I says, this is the last thing I said. This was a Zen thing. I says, be unattached to the outcome. You don't sit over there and fret. Oh my God, are they going to accept it? Uh -uh. This is the work that you're doing. It is your job to constantly put those out and put maybe a thousand of them out. And if you get 999 no's, that one yes could make the difference in your family, could make the difference in that person's business. But if you put none out, Very true. All right, everybody, get out there. Stop playing small if you are. If you need any help with it, call John and I up. We will help you in any capacity that you need. We will help you get better at whatever it is you're doing. That's our wish for you today. And we'll talk to you on our next video.